Uh, now, the steady jobs gain, lower un unemployment. Uh, one of the questions is why? Why don't we see wages uh, picking up? And it, 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 could that actually happen real soon? I want to go to Real Clear editor John Tamney, uh, Payne Capital Management President Ryan Payne, and Stock Swoosh founder Melissa Armo. Uh, let, let me start with you, John. It's, it, was, it was a great report in my mind when I started looking at some of the details, particularly of some, of some sectors. For instance, the U6 number going to 7.5 from 7.8. Uh, that, to me, reflects a wider breadth of people who were out of this job market, who were struggling and doing much better. But are you concerned about any element, particularly wages? No, no, no. For one, you never look askance at 3.9 percent. But for two, it's, at some point we've got to just throw out the ridiculous models happened upon by economists and just use common sense. Think about it. The U.S. has the most valuable companies in the world by far at the high level, the mid level, the low level. Can you name any company in history that got that way without adding the best talent possible and paying that talent well? Is it really consistent with the market valuations placed on U.S. companies that somehow those businesses could routinely bilk workers at all levels? It defies basic common sense. Americans are paid very well. Who cares that economic statistics don't reveal what's obvious? Melissa, what are your thoughts? Uh, the jobs report were up almost 100 points on the Dow. Uh, S&P is up for the fifth, fifth week in a row. We'll finish higher. Uh, and, and, you know, NASDAQ 100, just a couple days ago, we were talking about it breaking under the 50-day moving average. Now it could be back to a double top real soon. Well, you know what? People live and die by these numbers, which I think is ridiculous. This was a good number. It wasn't as expected. It's not the end of the world. And you know how I can figure that out? The market had no negative reaction today. We gapped up and opened up today. We had a huge rally yesterday. Apple came out. Their earnings were spectacular, made all brand new all-time highs. There's no reason to you know, have a pity party because we didn't hit these exact numbers. These estimates, sometimes they, I think they overshoot what these estimates are want to be, but this is a, still a good, solid, solid number. And you were talking about early this morning, and you were saying, you know what, if this was too big, then the Fed might say, oh, and then raise rates another extra time. So, I mean, I think it's good. Goldilocks? Goldilocks? No, I think we have to remember is, I mean, it, yeah, Goldilocks, actually the way it is, because we have modest inflation. Um, and, you know, we're seeing the economy grow. We're seeing, you know, unemployment go up. You know, it's moderate. And that's all the things you want to see to keep this economy cooking. Because, again, remember, this is one of the slowest economic recoveries we've ever had at all time. We're not going to go to zero to 60 overnight. So say that again. I said this is the, one of the slowest economic recoveries we've ever had. Well, you mean the, the, over the 10 year that, that we've had uh, expansion in the economy, right? But more right. recently, it has picked up a, a, a tremendous amount of sp steam. Yeah, the GDP was great for last quarter, but, I mean, you can't expect wages to just go skyrocketing overnight. I think that's going to take a while. What about the overall economy, though? Can we, can we expect uh, it's 3 percent reasonable? I think it's very realistic. I mean, you have capital expenditures coming back from corporations. Uh, you have, you know, people are spending money again. The government's spending money. This, this economy is heating up. Listen, corporations aren't going to pay more unless they're forced to. I mean, if you if you own a company and you run a company, you don't you want you're trying to save. I mean, that's the biggest expense that companies have is payroll. They're not going to pay more unless they absolutely have to. Right, right. and of course, that's uh, one of the things that was big on Janet Yellen's dashboard, the quits uh, part of the uh, of the uh, Jolts report, uh, and that's starting to edge up, but not a lot. Now, John, I know you're not a big fan of tariffs, uh, but the battle is joined, if you will. Uh, China announcing uh, 60 billion in retaliatory tariffs, but I thought the more important news this morning was China taking measures to sort of slow the decline in their currency, uh, which many people were saying, well, that was going to be their, their ace in a hole. What do you make of it all? Well, I think we overrate this idea that you can devalue your way to prosperity. If that were true, then Zimbabwe would be the richest country on earth and Argentina would be number two. When you devalue your currency, you weaken your workers and you repel the very investment that drives corporate and job creation. Uh, look at Japan. Japan had some of its best years of economic growth when the yen was soaring against the dollar. And so what's crucial is that the Chinese maintain that peg to the dollar. Let's never forget the only reason we're working is because we want to get things. The more that the Chinese get up and go to work every day, we Americans get a raise. Furthermore, China represents an increasingly large market for U.S. companies. Apple's the most valuable company in the world. Where does it get one quarter of its revenues from sales in China? Let's not mess up what's great for both countries.
Of course, Melissa, I think that's one of the issues we're trying to resolve, even greater access in, into China uh, and, and the ability to do business there without giving up too much or giving up intellectual property or trade secrets. Right, and that's what Trump is coming out doing all this. And again, it just goes back, 100% conviction, look at the market today. We came out with this, all this tariff stuff came out this morning before we opened, and we didn't have any negative reaction. I was surprised. The market is holding tough. It's hanging tough. It's trying to hang in there. The market really likes Trump a lot. It's trying to shrug off this tariff news whenever it comes out. I think you got to you got to give it a shot. You got to give him time. It could be a couple more months till all this gets straightened out. But China's fighting back. They're you know, fighting back hard. Well, you know, my thing, Ryan, is and I yeah. talked about it last night on my show. I think this ultimately is the a combination of art of the deal and art of war. Right. Yeah. If you read Art of the Deal, you know why President Trump uh, is fighting this fight in the first place. If you read the art, the, the art of war, right, and there's some key components in there, like when you're victorious, you don't crush the opponent. You leave them at exit. In other words, we, I think we're going to find a place where we're going to have to, uh, President Trump will have to find a place to declare victory because there will be an inflection point. There could be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, we, we import so much more <clears throat> from China than they import from us. So, I mean, we definitely have the upper hand here. Plus, China's economy is slowing. Our economy is really strong here. So this is just a, ne a negotiating ploy, and we'll probably win that battle or, you know, that whatever you want to call it, conflict. Right. John, what, what's, what's worrying you the most uh, of all the things in this economy, including debt, which, uh, uh, you know what, we're sort of remiss because we don't talk about it a lot and we used to. Well, debt rises when an economy is growing, and we know that for obvious reasons. No one's going to lend to a person or a business or even a country if they feel that that debt's not going to be paid back. So That's a mistake degree, I've been making with some of my relatives, but go ahead. <laughs> but to, some, to some degree, that takes care of itself. What worries me is, is the trade stuff. Uh, let's be clear. I, I don't buy into this notion that we have, we have a strong hand versus China. Again, Apple gets a quarter of its revenues from sales in China. GM sold more cars in China in the first quarter than it sold in North America. A, a Nike's number two market is China. Boeing sells one quarter of its planes in China. There are double the number of Starbucks in Shanghai than there are in New York City. Why on earth would we get in a war with a country that is still very poor? Imagine what a huge market they'll be for our world leading companies once China actually gets rich. Let's well, not mess with what's good. Right, but we do want access to that market because we've did, already yeah. got the access. Do we? Look at look at the numbers. Why would why does Apple get a quarter of its revenue from sales it, in China? It's still the number five smartphone maker in China, in part because of some some things. I mean, anyone who does real business in China will tell you there are a lot of obstacles against American companies and American products. So that number could be even better if they would level the playing field to the same degree that we level it for their companies. Yeah. I, no, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think that that's the point here is we definitely have room to negotiate, and I think you're going to see that. I think we're actually going to win this conflict. I mean, it could be a win-win, Melissa. That's the whole thing. China obviously says that they would like to do more, rely less on exports and more on the domestic economy. Uh, you know, they, they have a huge amount of uh, middle class that's grown over the years. And, and they're not going to always have this manufacturing, uh, you know, advantage. Uh, not, they certainly won't have it against a neighboring country. Nike does more manufacturing of their sneakers in Vietnam now than they do in, in, in China. So they want the they want domestic prices to be low, I would think. But it's just about freer or fairer sort of uh, markets. Right. That and also the intellectual property thing is a bugaboo, and so that is a problem for Trump as well. You know, when when you look at it on the whole, let's just say this all works out to America's advantage. Trump keeps saying America first. Let's just say it all works out. You know what? The other countries of the world are going to look at Trump differently because they've had issue with him doing this to them as well. And China's been the biggest one that's been trying to stand up to Trump with the with the tariffs. Right. If other countries are going to respect us more if this works out with China. Well, we're close to something with EU. We may get something over the weekend on NAFTA and we'll all see.